welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna use transformations to graph sine and cosine functions. So I already introduced how to graph sine and cosine. If you wanna click those videos up here. For this video, we're gonna do a little bit tougher examples. So examples like this, we'll do one sine function and one cosine function where we got a bunch of different shifts and transformations going on. And we're gonna really break this down. I'm gonna show you how you can graph something with this and it's actually not as bad as it looks, okay? so. Remember, these are the general formulas, and hopefully you know a little bit about amplitude and phase shifts and all that stuff, and if you really don't, then click the other video because I break it all down. But for this video, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into these examples. So first thing I like to do is identify everything I have and write it all out. So my amplitude is now three because my amplitude is the absolute value of A. So my amplitude is now three, but the parent function is normally one, but now it's three and basically what that is is a vertical stretch we just call it amplitude with these sine and cosine functions okay what about let's see well my period has changed okay since i have this two in front of the x period is normally two pi for sine and cosine but when we have a number out here in front of the x whatever that b is we divide two pi by that number to get our new period so our new period is two pi over two that is just pi what else do we have? We have a phase shift. We're shifting, let's see, since we're adding, we're shifting to the left, but not by pi over two. Remember, you have to divide this number by B. So pi over two divided by two, which will give me what? Pi over four. So I'm shifting, let's see, phase shift. We call this a phase shift. Phase shift. And I like to write the direction, left pi over four, okay? Let's see, what else do we have? We have a vertical shift down one unit. Vertical shift, and I draw a down arrow one, and I'll just write down one, okay? So this is everything we got going on with this function. So notice that when we got a vertical shift down one unit, how I like to look at this is that means our midline is shifting down one unit. And that's the first thing I do when graphing stuff like this is I sketch the midline and I basically draw a dotted line and our midline is just what the sine or cosine function oscillates about right normally it's the x-axis of the line y equals zero but now we've shifted down one unit so instead of y equals zero it is y equals negative one that is what our function is going to oscillate about right so what else do we have going on we have an amplitude of three and we know the amplitude that's the distance from the midline to the maximum, as well as the distance from the midline to the minimum. So from the midline to the maximum, we have three. So we have negative one, zero, one, two. So our maximum is at y equals two somewhere. All right, and our minimum is down here actually at y equals negative four. Let's see if I can get all the way down here. Hopefully that's all on the screen there. So yeah, my maximum is at two, my minimum's at negative four. What else? Let's worry about this phase shift, left pi over four. So left pi over four. So normally my sine function starts at zero, but now I'm gonna shift left pi over four units. So now I'm coming over here to pi over four. Cosine starts at its midline, right? Normally it starts at zero, zero, but now my midline is shifted down and I have a phase shift left. So actually my first point I'm gonna plot is here. And this is at negative pi over four, comma, negative one. My x is negative pi over four. My y is negative one, okay? So this is actually the first point for this function I'm able to graph. So now let's think about what other information. Are we missing anything else? Period. Period is pi, and this is important because period is basically the length, right? It's the length of one full cycle, basically. That's how we think of period. It's one full cycle, and it's the length from start to finish is pi, right? Normally it's two pi, but we've shifted down to pi, okay? So let's think about this. If our length from beginning to end for one period is pi, that means that negative pi over four plus pi will give me basically the last x coordinate for my period. So what if I took negative pi over four and added pi, I'd be left with three pi over four, okay? 
So let me graph 3 pi over 4 somewhere down here. 3 pi over 4. And what I like to call these are critical values, okay? We have five critical values always on sine and cosine functions. For the parent functions, they are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Five values, right? For these functions, we still have five. They're just different because of these transformations. But we can find them. I found the first one based on the phase shift. I found the second one based on the period and adding that to the phase shift. I can find the middle one. How can I find the middle one? Basically by adding these two and then dividing by two. That's one way to think of it. So what if I added three pi over four and negative pi over four? That's two pi over four. And if I divide that by two, that's just pi over four. So I have pi over four, that's halfway. And you may have to make adjustments to your graph. Again, since this is halfway, that means I probably should move my point to like here, my three pi over four. Well, let's think about it. If this is halfway, is that right? This is halfway, then I have like here and here. I don't need to move quite that much, but maybe to right about there. It just depends on how good you want your graph to be. So I'm gonna move three pi over four to here. And that's the cool thing about having your own graph and sketching your own graph is that you get to change the labels, you get to do whatever you want, and it actually makes your life easier rather than harder. It actually makes your life easier. So, all right, we have three of our five critical values. How can I find the rest? Well, what's directly between negative pi over four and pi over four? That one's just zero. That one's obvious, right? What about pi over four and three pi over four? Hopefully it's clear that it's 2 pi over 4, but it's not. if it's not, you can still do the same thing. You can add these two and divide by 2. So 2 pi over 4 is just, let's see, pi over 2 that simplifies 2. So here we have pi over 2. Here we have 0. I'll draw it way down here. I wonder if y'all can see that. So now I have all my critical values. I have my amplitude. I have period, phase shift, vertical shift. I have everything I need to start graphing this. I even have my first point here at negative power four, negative one. So I know that sine starts at the midline. There's no reflection, right? This is positive out here in front. So that means we're headed up toward the maximum. So I'm going up three units toward the maximum. And I just follow my critical values, right? The maximum, the next critical value is at the maximum. The next critical value is back down at the midline, the next critical value is down here at the minimum, and the next critical value is back up at the midline. So if I draw my curve between all of these, I'm gonna try to do this as best I can. There we go, okay, this actually ain't bad for my standards. All right, so I have something that looks like this. And again, it's pretty simple. Once you get your critical values and you know the pattern, okay, it's headed up toward the max, then back to the midline, then back to the minimum. And that's why I like to think of them in terms of maximums and minimums, because then you don't have to go and evaluate a bunch of stuff. And so this is the way I do it. We're gonna go ahead and try a cosine function, something very similar to this, and do that one as well. But hopefully this made sense. All right, for this next example, we're gonna graph this cosine function using transformations. And I invite you to try this on your own, pause the video, and then press play to check your answer. So I'll go and start again. I'm just gonna write down all the information I know about this. So since I have this negative out in front, this is like a little invisible negative one. So my A is negative one. My amplitude is the absolute value of A, which is still just one. So my amplitude is just one, just like the parent function. Amplitude is one. But what does this negative do? This reflects over the midline. Reflects, whoops. Reflection over midline, flex over midline. And I say midline instead of x-axis, and I'll show you why once we start graphing it. So, reflects over the midline. Let's think about this. What else do we have? Our period has changed. This x over 2 is the same as saying 1 half times x. So, our b in this case is 1 half. What is 2 pi over 1 half? This is a very common mistake I see, and I see people go, 2 pi over 1 half equals pi. No, it does not. So 2 pi is 2 pi over 1 is another way to think of it. So what if we write it as 2 pi over 1? Then we can flip the bottom and multiply. 
2 over 1, then we get 4 pi. So yeah, just make sure you be careful with that algebra. So our period is 4 pi. Period 4 pi, all right? Period is 4 pi. What about our phase shift? We do have a phase shift. It is negative, so we are shifting to the right. But by how many units? Well, pi over 4 over 1 half, right? And be careful of the algebra. Again, the same mistake can be made. So pi over 4 over 1 half. I can flip the bottom and multiply, and I get what? Pi over 2. So we're shifting right pi over 2. Shifts right pi over 2. And then what else? Shifts up by 1. Shifts up. One. So I think I have all the information I need to start graphing this deal. So again, the place I usually start, in fact, the place I always start, is the midline. My midline has shifted up one. So my midline is now here at positive one. And I can draw a little dotted line for my new midline. This is what the cosine function will oscillate about, is this new midline, this line y equals one. What else do I have? Well, I have shifts right pi over two. So normally cosine starts at zero and it starts at its maximum, which is one for the parent function. But now we're shifting to the right. So now our first point is gonna be shifted right by pi over two units. So our first point is actually just pi over two. Our period is four pi. So how can we get our last critical value? We can just add four pi to that pi over two. Okay, so I'm gonna draw it down here. What if I add four pi to that pi over two? Well, four pi is what, eight pi over two? So I get nine pi over two. Nine pi over two. And again, I wanna get five critical values. This is how I do it. I get five critical values because then it makes it pretty easy and you'll see how in a second. So pi over two plus nine pi over two is 10 pi over two. And if I divide that by two, I get this middle point. So you're basically taking the average of two numbers, right? If I add these two and divide by two, I get that middle point, which happens to be five pi over two. Five pi over two. And then maybe you notice a pattern, and you'll notice patterns when you get more experience, that this is like one pi, five pi, nine pi, so this is gonna be seven, this is gonna be three, but if you didn't notice that, you could add these two and divide by two, and then add these two and divide by two to get those final uh, critical values. So now I have all five critical values. This is three pi over two. This is seven pi over two. I have all five critical values. I've accounted for my phase shift. I've accounted for my vertical shift. For my period, I have my period accounted for. Amplitude, okay, so where's my maximum gonna be? Up here at two. And my minimum's down there at one. Okay, good, so I have pretty much everything accounted for. I just need to worry about this reflection over the midline. So where am I starting again? At pi over two. Cosine functions start at their maximum, right? Normally it starts at zero, one for the parent function, which is its maximum for the parent function, has a maximum of one. So since we're starting at the maximum, I'm starting up here, but then what is happening? I'm reflecting over the midline. So I'm actually starting down here at the minimum instead of the maximum, okay? And this is why I like to write reflect over the midline instead of reflect over the x, um, instead of reflect over the x-axis because that can get confusing. If I plot my point here and then reflect over the x, that's, that's wrong. So it can get confusing. I'd rather think of it this way. This is what works best for me. So now that I have that first point, I know what cosine looks like and how it oscillates. I have these critical values. I'm pretty much done. I just plot my points because it's going to start from its minimum, go up to the midline, then up to the maximum, then down to the minimum, then back down to, I'm sorry, midline, then minimum. It follows the same pattern every time, okay? So I can draw my little wave in between. There we go, and this is a rough sketch of what this function looks like. If you ever wanna test these functions out and play with them, I highly recommend going on Desmos. Google Desmos graphing, and you can do some really cool stuff, graph all kinds of different transformations. You can check this answer for me if you wanna check, and you can just mess with this. Put, put two in front of here, put four in front of here. Do a bunch of crazy stuff and visually see how it affects it without having to graph a bunch of stuff. 
I showed my students that and they seem to enjoy that and when I show people that it it makes sense to them um, so hopefully this helps this is my method for graphing these sine and cosine functions hopefully it helps you and if it does make sure to hit like and hit subscribe and leave any questions below in the comments and keep flexing those brain muscles I'll see you in the next video